thing I told you to put a pin in? First you tell me to accept myself as I am, and then you tell me this? Okay, we're gonna put a pin in that. I mean, it's pretty hard to forget when you give me a literal replay of it. So, self-acceptance is step one. I thought it was step five. Growth, not grief. Okay, fine. So I've accepted all the sh things about myself. Now what? You have to accept it without judgment. I'm sorry, but there's just no way that I can learn to love the way that I force my support on people when they didn't ask for it. I said without judgment, not without negative judgment. So I just... Accept it as true? Acceptance does not mean liking everything about yourself. How is this not just admitting defeat? If you want to intentionally change something about yourself, you have to know that it's true. So self-acceptance isn't just a refusal to change the things that are true about me? True doesn't mean permanent. Now that you know what's true, you get to decide what feels good to keep and what feels good to change. Aw, that's sweet that you think change might feel good. I'm just not very smart. I am begging you to stop doing dumb things and then justifying them because you don't see yourself as intelligent. First you tell me to accept myself as I am and then you tell me this? Okay, we're gonna put a pin in that. For when? For Friday. Anyway, if you keep walking around thinking you're unintelligent, because I am, you will only notice examples that prove you right. I do enjoy being right. And probably even continue to do things against your better judgment because they fit the idea you have of yourself in, in your my head. head. And don't I know myself better than anyone else? Oh, so you're intelligent and a smartass. Yeah! Wait, no! How dare you leave off on this note? Aw, that's sweet that you think change might feel good. It's a great teaser for the next video. But we just talked about this a few weeks ago. And we're probably gonna talk about it again. You're gonna learn this a lot. You're gonna learn this a lot, a lot. Because the thing about change is... It changes. Cute. Thank you. But this isn't about me. So I just learn a lesson about change and then learn it again? Yep, pretty much. Learning about life and yourself is nothing like learning about math. But I'm good at math! <laughs> You can't just learn the fact once and then you're good. The same problems come up in different ways, and different contexts, and different words, and different feelings. It's not a matter of reaching a point where you've perfected the lesson. Is that a challenge? But you'll get better at learning it, seeing the patterns, and navigating it more quickly and less painfully. Yeah, 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 practice makes better, whatever. I'm not feeling good. Maybe you're hungry. Mm. Maybe you're tired. No. Maybe you're sweaty. Oh, maybe you ate dairy. Maybe you have a really annoying hangnail that's just so distracting that you can't focus on anything else because it hurts so bad. Stop! Why do you just keep listing mundane, easily fixable problems? No, don't look at them like that. Look at me and talk to me. Well, because so many times you have an issue, it is a mundane, easily fixable problem. Do you realize how dismissive it is when you assume that, though? It's important to pay attention to our physiological needs, and- I know. But it's also unfair to me to assume that every emotional problem I have can be fixed with, like, a snack or a shower. Huh. What? You're right. I'm what? You're right. Sometimes our issues really are due in part to a simple, fixable problem, but it was really dismissive of me to assume that I was going to be able to say a one-sentence fix and solve your problem. I'm sorry. Thank you. I asked for help, and it helped! That's awesome! For the last few months, I felt like my videos just, just weren't, weren't hitting, hitting right. right. Because even if you were writing about a topic you were passionate about, the scripts felt repetitive, and the humor just wasn't there in the same way it used to be, and something just... didn't feel right? Yeah. So I asked my friends to just sit on a call with me, talk with me about it, and help me brainstorm new ideas. Is that why your videos the last few weeks have had a slightly different energy to them? Yep. I was so afraid of asking for help because you wanted to do this on your own. But it turns out that the help not only made me feel more confident, but it gave you new insight on what was working and what wasn't. Because asking for help isn't admitting failure or defeat. It's acknowledging how talented the people that I love are and using teamwork to make your art better and my mental health better. I think my friend is pulling away from me. Has this been a sudden change? Kind of gradual. But you didn't really notice until the, the change, change felt, felt more extreme. extreme. And now I'm wondering what I did wrong. Why do you think someone had to have done something wrong? Because our friendship just kind of ended. Yeah, that doesn't always mean someone did anything wrong. Oh, so they just hate me for no reason. That was a huge jump and you know it. Yeah. Sometimes when we grow and change as people, our friends don't always grow and change in the same direction. Exactly. And that doesn't mean that you're not friends anymore. It just means that as our ways of living evolve, so will your relationship. So what do I do about it? Well, that depends. You never give me a straight answer. So what do I do about my friendship not being as close anymore? How do you feel about it? I don't know. Do you feel like you're putting more, more work, work into, into the friendship, friendship than they are? Not really. I've been kind of distant too. And do you miss them? Yeah, but I don't feel like they're gone or missing from your life. I know we'll talk again eventually. So would you say that this friendship change feels kind of... Natural? Yeah, I guess so. Huh. What? I don't know. It, it sucks, but also... Just feels like the right decision? Yeah. But what if it didn't? Hmm. Hang on. <laughs>
So what do I do about my friendship not being as close anymore? How do you feel about it? Not great. Do you feel like you're putting more, more work, work into, into the, the friendship, friendship than they are? Yeah. Our conversations feel one-sided and not as fulfilling. And that getting them to talk to me can feel like pulling teeth. Do you miss them? Yeah, but if this is the way our friendship looks now, you're not sure it's one that you want anymore? I guess not. Then tell them that. That I don't want to be friends if they keep being a stuck up No. That you've noticed a change in your dynamic and I miss them. And you want to check in to see if there's a way that the two of you can work together to fix it. But what if there isn't? Then you're gonna have to decide if the positives they bring into your life are also worth the pain they're causing. And if it's not, that's okay. There doesn't have to be hatred or a fight. Just the knowledge that maybe we don't work as well as we used to. Sometimes people comment asking me to talk about how annoying it is when I interrupt myself in my videos. And my comments don't usually get to me, but that one just leaves me confused and stunned every time. People say it's rude to assume what someone is gonna say next, and yeah, I get that, but in the context of my videos, it's scripted. Also, the whole point in my videos is that they are both me, so I do know what I'm gonna say next. This isn't an attack on people who have left that comment. I just don't understand it. If you want advice on what to do when people assume what you're gonna say or interrupt you, that's a different topic than being annoyed when I, a script writer, have successfully predicted what I'm gonna say. Anyway, in the grand scheme of things, this is not a big deal, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. Thanks. I did something wrong. Yeah? I don't think you heard me. I said I did something wrong. No, I heard you. I'm just not surprised. Ouch. Not because it's you. Because everyone does things wrong sometimes. No, it's not like that. What, so nobody is allowed to make a mistake ever? I didn't say that nobody can make mistakes. I just said that I can't, can't make, make a mistake. mistake. You're not capable of being perfect. Not with that attitude. So you did something wrong. And I never want to do it again. Great. Whether or not never is possible in this scenario. It better be. I'm glad you're aware of the mistake and are taking steps to better yourself from it. But I shouldn't have made it in the first place. Maybe, maybe not. But you did. So rather than spending your time and energy on a complete guilt and regret spiral, it'll be much better for you and your community if I put that energy into learning from my mistake and repairing damage if that's what the situation calls for. No matter what I do, it just doesn't sound right. What doesn't? The song I've been working on. I'm trying to produce and mix it, but no matter what I do, it doesn't, doesn't feel, feel good, good enough. enough. I say this with love. Go ahead. Hurt me with your words. Have you ever considered that maybe it's just not something you're very good at? Well, then how am I supposed to get good other than keep practicing? I mean, yes, but maybe you could practice in a lower stakes environment. No, I want to put out music and I want to say that I did it all by myself. And when do you want to do this? Immediately. But you don't like the way it sounds. No. Pick two. You do it yourself, you do it now, you're proud of your work. No, I'll take all three, thanks. Why? Because I should be able to. Why? Because other people are able to. Why? Because I want to do it on my own. Not everything you do has to be a one-woman production. False. Sometimes if you want something to be the best that it can be, you need to ask for help. But that's not fair! Maybe not, but that doesn't change the fact that there are people out there who know more and are better than you at different things. Next you're gonna say my life will be easier if I work with them and learn from them. You are so lucky that I hold the patience for both of us. I feel like I have so many things to do and you can never remember what any of them are? Yeah, so whenever I have free time to get things done, you just sit around trying to remember what you have to do instead, instead of, of actually, actually doing, doing it. it. And then I just feel worse because I have this overwhelming feeling of, I swear there's something I'm forgetting. Well, what do you do when you think of something that you want to get done? If I can do it in the moment, I'll do it then. Really? Okay, maybe not every time, but sometimes. And what if it's something more time consuming that you can't do immediately? Uh... Do you ever write it down? Sometimes. Where? Uh... Do you have a consistent place that you keep track of these things, like a notebook? Or a specific thread on an app like Notion? Or a to-do list that's easily accessible to you? No, I don't use any of those. Why not? Because I just know that it won't help me. But have you tried? No, but I just know. You can't know unless you try, so maybe if you keep forgetting things, it might be worth a try. And putting actual effort into the attempt that you give it. Please don't pop a blood vessel. No, I almost had it! Had what? The joke that was supposed to go in this part of the script. I'm getting meta here, are we? Uh, no, that's a different platform. Anyway, what were you actually trying to figure out? I just want to do something creative, but I got nothing. So you're trying to will yourself into creativity? Am I not supposed to do that? I mean, you can, but it's probably just gonna end up in you feeling frustrated and insecure and unsatisfied with anything you come up with because that's kind of the whole point, point of creativity. creativity. Forcing it isn't usually helpful. But what do I do if I need to come up with something soon? Think about literally anything else. Huh? Let your mind wander. Consume art you like. Talk to a friend. Get your mind off of the focus. And that'll work? I can't guarantee it, but it sure will better your chances of being in the mood to create if you're not sitting there angry at yourself. Oh, well now I can just sit here 
you're angry at you instead for saying that. I am going to drown in my to-do list. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Please don't tell me you have something else for me to get done. But to-do lists aren't typically made of water, so you can't drown, drown in them. them. Wow, I am so glad you're a stand-up comedian. I'll ignore that dig because I know that you're stressed. I just have so much to do in the next few weeks that instead of doing any of it, you just stare at it. It's like I'm paralyzed by the weight of the things that I need to do. And looking at a long list of big tasks makes it feel worse because I don't know where to start and I have a month to do it all, which allows you to procrastinate all of it because you feel like you've got time. So how do I not save it all for the last second? Can you try taking it one day at a time? Most of these things can't be accomplished in a day, so break them up. Instead of trying to find 10 pieces of furniture today, a bed, a mattress, a couch, a desk, make today a research day. Pick one piece of furniture, like a couch, and make a list of a bunch of places that sell them. So then tomorrow I can start visiting or scrolling through them, and the day after you have a solid list of what you need, what you want, and what you won't accept. And then when it comes time to actually shop for one, you won't have nearly as much options, overload, or items to even look through. Do you enjoy making my desk shake? Sorry, I'm just really anxious today and I can't stop fidgeting and jumping around. Yeah, if I stop then I just start playing with my hair or bouncing your leg or Something like that. What have you been up to the last few days? Nothing that would make me anxious. Like, I don't know, like watching TV and video editing, all just stuff at, at my your desk. desk. So are you moving throughout the day? Yeah, I'll like go to the kitchen or go upstairs or something. You know that's not what I meant. You know I don't like, like exercising. exercising. Yeah, but you gotta get all that anxious energy out of you somehow. I can't just wait for it to go away. How do you feel right now? Shitty. So would you rather wait it out or try exercising? You look like your body is about to explode from nervous energy. <laughs> Feels like it too. I'm not saying you have to beat your PR or sprint until you can't keep going. Just get moving a little bit. Just get moving a little bit and drink some water, would ya? So I felt like one of my friends was pulling away from me. Okay. And I tried to talk to them about it. That's a good start. And nothing happened. You mean you talked about it and then nothing changed or they didn't even give a full response? I feel like both of those scenarios could apply to the advice that we're working toward right now. Valid. So what now? What do you mean what now? What do I say to them? Are you attempting to, to get, get closure? closure? Yeah, but I just have a feeling that that's not gonna happen. Yeah, it might not. Sometimes friendships just end quietly. And I'm not saying that it's okay to ghost your friends when you don't want to be friends with them anymore. Noted. But if you're on the receiving end of the ghosting, sometimes I might just have to let it go while accepting that you did all you could, but it's not my responsibility to force someone to talk to me about their issues. Mm -hmm.